Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Granada, Last Stand of the Moors, 1482 to 1492. This is a game designed by Jose Rivero and published by Compass Games. This is a new block game that Compass has just released, and it is an offshoot of the Seki Gohara system. So any fans of that system will be real curious to check this one out. I know it's been a very popular game for many years, but there's some new mechanics and some new aspects that are introduced in this game to expand it out quite a bit more. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. At the close of the 15th century, Fernando II of Aragon and Isabel I of Castile, the Catholic monarchs of Spain, embarked on a great crusade to finish the long reconquista of the Iberian Peninsula from the Moors. Their objective, the Emirate of Granada. The campaign lasted 10 years, from 1482 to 1492, and this game recreates the twilight of the last Muslim kingdom in Spain. One player takes command of the Christian kingdoms, and the other the Nazareth Emirate. The fog of war created by the unit hidden blocks and the strategic cards provides a great amount of excitement, uncertainty, and very engaging strategies to move armies around the board, provoking battles and sieges. Armies are composed of foot soldiers, cavalry, crossbowmen, and artillery. Also, fleets to move troops along the coast, blockade, and bombard ports, and strategic locations. Will you in the role of Catholic monarchs end the long-lasting Reconquista, or will you as Nazareth Emir save the Jewel of Granada? And we can see here the map and the blocks that you'll be using as well as the cards. We get components, we have 22 by 34 inch mounted map, 174 blocks, tiles and cubes, two sheets of stickers, two draw bags, 40 castles and watchtowers, seven markers, 158 cards, five player mats, and one rule book. It is rated as a medium complexity, and the time scale are seasonal turns, map scales point to point strategic level movement, Unit scale, battalions and companies, and it is for two players, and it is low solitaire suitability due to card play, and you're gonna be playing off of hands of cards individually, so yeah, you'll have hidden information. Average time to play is three to four hours, and it is recommended for ages 14 and up. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. And we've got two bags of blocks, both black and white. Two decks of cards, some more wood bits, three bags of those, our two draw bags, a sheet of clarifications, which is going to cover game materials, setup, and a siege example, a rule book, full color, we've got our sticker sheets for the blocks. Both black and white, that look great. Player aid cards. And then the mounted map. So let's set up the map and take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the mounted map that comes with the game. It is a beautifully done map and it lays flat right out of the box. Compass has been doing a great job of getting these maps where they just lay flat right out of the box. No back bending. No laying any weights on top of them, just lay flat right out of the box so you can get right to playing. Along the right-hand side, we have the impact track. The top right, we have the turn track and recruitment. Across the board, we have the Catholic Monarch Reinforcement Box. At the bottom, we have the Granada Kingdom Recruitment Box, as well as the Nazareth Palace and Boabdil Mixed Armies. And then we have the map legend on the right-hand side. that I'll explain to you what all of the different terrain features are on the map. Beautifully done, looks really great, point-to-point, -point, easy to read map and it's all facing one way. So when you're playing a post, someone is going to be looking at the map upside down, just something to keep in mind. And we'll take a look at the player aids that come with the game. First off, we start with the victory points track where you'll track your victory points for both the Muslim and the Christian players. Next, we have the battle reference card, which gives the steps for land battles, deployment, impacts, and then the special card explanations, as well as special units on the front. Then on the reverse side, we have castle sieges, losses, retreats, card replenishment, and naval battles all explained to you. And lastly, we have the player aid foldout, which gives you steps for the yearly cycle, how to buy movement, mustering, land movement, and the types of movement and the modifiers on the right-hand side. On the back, we have the steps for overruns, naval movement, victory, and setup. And on the inside, we have an illustrated example of the setup for both players. 
Next, we'll take a look at the cards. There are three decks of cards in the game. You have the Muslim deck, the Christian deck, and the shared naval deck, which both sides will use for naval movement. These cards are used to bid for turn order, for movement, as well as deploying units in land and naval battle. Now we'll take a look at an example of some of the cards in the game. We have the Christian deck on top and the Muslim deck on the bottom, and you can see they share the same layout. At the top left, this tells you the blocks of the faction that may deploy in the battle. The bottom left is the naval combat number. The faction name is below that. The initiative bid number is on the right-hand side, and if there is a trumpet icon like you see there for the Other Kingdoms card, that indicates a special attack ability. Next, we'll take a look at the wood bits that come with the game. The rectangular blocks will be used for your standard units in the game. The square towers will represent castles. The round towers represent control of watchtowers. The discs below that will be used for multiple things. Initiative markers, turn markers, hit markers, as well as garrisons of watchtowers that cannot move but can be destroyed. Below that we have cubes, which will represent control of the resource locations on the board. And then the rectangular block here is used for the pioneers for devastation markers and castle sieges for the Christians, and then the out of supply markers for both players in the game. And to go with the wood bits, we have these stickers. These will be applied for the Christian units, and then for the Muslim units. Next, we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 28 page full color rule book. The inside of the front cover, we have the table of contents listing out all the rules and their associated page numbers. There's also some optional rules, design notes, credits, a little history piece on the war for Granada, and then the card manifest at the back of the book. Starts off with the introduction, a listing of the components, the victory conditions explained to you, victory points, the game pieces, which are all the blocks and the stickers, which we've already looked at. Cards are all explained to you as well. Locations and boxes on the map. Then we get to the initial setup on page six. And remember that fold out with the player aid gives you an illustrated example of how the game will be set up. Here it also explains it to you. Then they get into the yearly cycle. We have here an illustrated example of mustering in a location with a castle. Then we have naval movement and the naval movement and enemy fleets. Land battles explained to you. Artillery and special attacks, cavalry and crossbow special attacks, morale challenge cards, example of impact scoring, losses, retreats, castle sieges, the discs, how those are used. And remember, we talked about those discs with the sieges. You're going to be placing those under the watchtowers. They can't move, but they can be destroyed. Then you have the impacts required during a castle siege. Castle siege restrictions, besieged blocks, and then more into the naval battle aspect of the game with illustrated examples. Then we have the card replenishment and then the special rules here on page 16. Military orders, Nazareth Palace Guard and Mujahideen, which are for Muslims only. And we have movement and combat, optional blocks and cards and markers. Some more of the special cards and then those little small rectangular blocks we saw the Pioneers for Devastation Markers and Castle Sieges, which are for the Christians only, and then the Out of Supply Markers. Then we get to the design notes on page 21. So not a lot of rules, not a lot of pages of rules, I should say. Then we get to the credits, and then we have the history bit on the War for Granada itself. Give you a bit of a background on the history of the conflict. Then we get to the card manifest here for the last few pages, which finishes out on the back of the rule book. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Granada, Last Stand of the Moors, 1482 to 1492. This is a game designed by Jose Rivero and published by Compass Games. Once again, we get a big, heavy box of goodness from Compass, who just keeps knocking it out of the park. Fantastic, top-notch quality production here, and uh, it looks just beautiful on the table. If you are a fan of Seki Gahara, you're going to want to check this one out because it is derivative of that system. It's not the same game. It is using the same framework, but it expands out on it quite a bit because now you're dealing with a wider theater. You're also dealing with naval and ground combat. So it's going to be much more expansive than Sekigahara. So if you're a fan of that, you're going to want to check this one out because you're going to have more to play with here. And I think the subject matter itself is interesting, but then you add in all the different aspects using that Sekigahara system and it will be quite the winner for everyone. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.